All right, and welcome to a demonstration and discussion of the features of the Dofer A189-1 voltage control bit modifier. Uh, my name is Raul, and I'll be walking you through some of the features of this particular module that we have in front of us here. Uh, right on the far left, or far right, sorry about that. Um, we're going to be sort of going over some of the basic features and functions of this particular module. Um, and then later on in the demonstration, we may bring in some of these modules as well to voltage control some of the parameters on this. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what type of module that we have here. Because uh, it's a little bit different than some of the other modules that we've dealt with in the past. Uh, this particular one is uh, considered to be a distortion unit. Um, it's a flavor of a distortion. Um, and it uh, distorts the audio signal coming in uh, by modifying the bit rate and the sample rate of whatever signal you're feeding in. So this could be a guitar, this could be a drum track, um, this could be a CD that you're playing, uh, pretty much any audio source that can be fed into the signal in right here can be modified using this particular module. Now, we said that it was a uh, distortion unit, and so it can distort your signal with uh, a little bit of bit crushing found here on the second dial down, bit crushing. Um, and it has a setting going all the way from the minimum, which is here. I'll move this out of the way a little bit. At the full counterclockwise position. And then at the full bit crushing setting all the way in the clockwise position. Okay. Now, the other way you can modify your signal coming in is by reducing the sample rate. It's going to be right here. It's coupled down. Um, and sample rate is basically the quality of the signal coming in. So this one kind of works in the opposite direction. If it's fully clockwise, then your signal is at full quality coming in. And then if you move it all the way counterclockwise, then you're reducing it more and more until you get to the far counterclockwise position, at which point it's at the lowest resolution that this particular module can output. And we'll hear what some of these sound like as well. Now, in addition to that, you also have a little mode switch here. Uh, this has 16 different settings, which you can move through. And they're just numbered uh, 1, 2, 3, all the way to number 16. Numbers are a little hard to see here. Um, there is a full description of what the different modes can do for you. I'm going to just sort of briefly cover the, the titles of these modes. I'm not going to go too much into the technical parts of them, because um, for our purposes, since we're just demonstrating what these do, um, it's not really necessary to get into too technical a discussion of these. So in mode one, that's called the bit crushing mode. In mode two, that's going to be the AND mode. In mode three, that's going to be the OR mode. In mode four, that's going to be the XOR mode. In mode five, uh, that's going to be bit shift right. In mode six, that's going to be bit shift left. In mode seven, that's going to be multiplication. In mode eight, Compare and Complement. Mode 9, Compare and Absolute. Mode 10, Addition Mode. Mode 11, Addition with BC Swap. That's a bit crushing swap. And then Mode 12, that's Short Delay. Number 1, with Dynamic Normalization. Mode 13, that's Short Delay number 2. Mode 14, that's short delay number three, mode 15, short delay number four, and mode 16 is going to be four stages, FIR filter, okay? Uh, 
basically for our purposes, I just want the understanding to be that these are going to be 16 different settings that you can put this unit in to distort your signal coming in here, signal in, in 16 different ways. So you can vary the distortion that you get from this unit. And that's what this unit is intended for. It's for distorting your signal in very interesting and creative ways. And in addition to those ways, you can distort them using the bit crushing or the sample rate reduction. Um, you can also voltage control some of these. So uh, these ports that we didn't talk about here, there's a CV input here where you can feed a control voltage input. Uh, like either something like an LFO, I can feed a sine wave into my bit crushing setting and adjust it via a waveform so that it will dynamically move whatever setting I have on my bit crushing. Uh, there's also a CV port in the sample rate here. So whatever setting I have my sample rate at, I can dynamically change by feeding it a waveform of my choosing. Um, in addition to those inputs, you also have two level inputs which allow you to dynamically change, or manually change, I should say. You can increase or decrease the level of modulation by increasing or decreasing the level of the knob. So whatever CV is being fed into either one of these, you can turn how much of that modulation is going to go to the to the subsequent parameter. So in this case, if I turn this level about midway, then half of my signal from the bit crushing CV is going to adjust the setting on the bit crush. Um, and the sample rate CV, whatever I have plugged in here, if I have this all the way fully clockwise, that's at the full position, then all of my signal coming in my sample rate CV is going to be fed to this setting and thus changing it according to whatever waveform I have piped into it or uh, other voltage controlled source like a ADSR here. We'll talk about this little friend that we have here a little bit later. So for the most part we've talked about all of the basic features of this. Talked about our level here, what that does for you, sample rate CV, the mode switch, just doing a little review, um, sample rate, so our dial all the way to the clockwise position is our regular quality, um, our level, this is for our bit crushing CV, so I'm going to bring this all the way down, bring this one down too, just so we're starting at zero. Uh, bit crushing. Bit crushing is all the way to the minimum, so we're not adjusting our bit crush at all. And then this is going to be where we feed our signal in. And you can also adjust how much signal is coming into to our module. So that, my friends, is our basic description of the features of the Dofer A189-1. So now let's hear what this sounds like. <laughs> 